Hey everyone, Jeff Bickley here with AccuSpray. There's been a lot of buzz in the industry lately around the Series Air project and the launch event that they hosted last week. I'm here with our very own Aaron Duval, my friend, co-founder and COO of AccuSpray, who was on site for the event. And we've had a lot of questions coming in about what we think, how this platform fits into real operations and what role we're playing in the early testing. So we wanted to sit down and give you an honest firsthand breakdown of what Aaron saw and what stood out. So stick around and we'll get into it. Aaron, thanks for taking the time to jump on with me. I know you're not a big fan of being on camera. You usually prefer working behind the scenes. But, you know, like I mentioned, we've been getting a lot of questions about the Series Air project and how we fit into the early evaluation. So before we get into the event or the drone specs, um, maybe let's start with the super user program that they're rolling out. So talk to me about that and how we got involved. Yeah, a couple of months ago, Steve Lee reached out to us and invited us to be part of the Cirrus Super User Program. Um, it's basically an early testing group, a handful of operators and industry folk from around the country who get first access to the drone, uh, run it in real world operations, and give the engineering team real world feedback. Um, it's independent. There's no marketing obligations or anything like that. The whole point is just to push the drone in different environments around the country to help identify what needs have to be dialed in before a broader launch. We're actually getting our unit here in a couple of weeks, which will give us a chance to start putting it through the paces here in our conditions in Michigan. That's awesome. So, and honestly, that, that super user program is super humbling to be invited into that. Uh, it's, it's cool to be one of just a handful of operators from around the country helping to shape the direction of the project. So, you know, as part of that rollout, as everyone knows, they had an event last week where they invited these super users, as they're calling them, out to Vermont, where they'll be assembling the drone. Walk us through what that experience was like from your perspective. Sure. Um, the event was really well done. Everything was well organized, and you can tell they put a lot of work and thought into it. They were mm -hmm. very transparent about what's American-made today, what's not, um, what their plans are, what they're working towards. Um, the facility tour at Image Tech was very impressive. They were clearly investing heavily into the manufacturing side. It felt like a real operation, not just like a demo space. Um, and the whole atmosphere was professional but relaxed great hospitality and the opportunities to talk with the team behind the scenes and the other inner circle folks in the industry. Um, I walked away thinking, yeah, they did a really good job with this and they are very serious about this launch. That's great. So talk to me about image tech. I hadn't heard that name before the event. Yeah. So image tech was new to me before all this too. Um, they're a contract electronics manufacturing company, mainly doing PCB assembly and contract electronics work for different industries. What's interesting is that now that they've partnered with Josh and the team at Cirrus to scale up into this assembly and drone manufacturing stuff, they said they would be building ESC um, boards, wiring harnesses to start. They just moved into the facility where they'll be doing all the assembly. That's interesting. So talk about the drone itself. Maybe you could give people your first impressions. What stood out to you about this platform the most? The size. It is massive. Um, hmm. Sheer physical size of this thing is what you notice. Um, even when you know it's a 40 gallon, it doesn't register until you're standing next to it. The motors are massive. The ESCs are huge like bricks. Everything is upsized to handle the weight and that thrust. The whole platform is built around moving a lot of product quickly across a large scale. It's definitely a purpose-built machine, not a generalist. You can tell it was designed specifically for large, open row crop environments where you've got long straight lines and you're chasing throughput but also able to lay down some big GPA on some specialty crops. Man, 40 gallons is insane. Did they talk about how many acres that thing can knock down in a day or? Yeah, they said they're gonna let the super users establish that. So we're gonna find out soon. 
but there's always mm-hmm. variables to that, right? What size fields you're in, what obstacles exist. Are you in that perfect square mile section, flat terrain, clean borders? In that kind of environment, those numbers are going to be massive. But for where we're at in Southeast Michigan, um, if we really planned it out and got selective with our field size and where we fly this drone, I think we realistically could get 550 to 600 acres a day. And that's me being honest about our train and the way our fields are shaped and the way we operate. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. So more than double what we typically see on a T-50, but probably not the best tool for a lot of the jobs that we do. Yeah, um, we do a lot of smaller, irregular shaped fields, anywhere from 10 to 40 acres. That's still the sweet spot for the mid-sized drones, like the 50 liters, um, or like what Exidy is working on right now. They're efficient, they're maneuverable, and they fit in almost every environment. And, and actually what most operators are probably flying in typically. Hmm. That's interesting. And I want to come back to that, but staying on point with the, uh, the Black Betty, um, while it's true that you can definitely knock out a lot more acres per day, a full setup is not going to be cheap. So it's going to require some more investment than just the price of the drone. Maybe talk to me about that just a little bit. Yeah, um, the price point of the drone is actually really attractive. Um, Now, I don't know what's going to happen to that price point as they shift more towards their manufacturing from China to the U.S. Maybe they find efficiencies and keep it the same. But realistically, if you're replacing those components with U.S. made parts, the price might have to go up. But time will tell. Um, Hmm. But even assuming the drone price stays the same, you're still looking at needing a 30 to 40 kilowatt diesel generator, a trailer built to carry the weight of the aircraft, the batteries, all the ancillary equipment. Um, You're talking about water capacity to support hundreds of acres in a day. All of that ancillary equipment adds up. It's not cheap. Now, I still think it makes a lot of sense from an ROI standpoint for the right applicators, but these are the things that you're going to have to take into account. It's not a plug-and-play setup. You're essentially building this entire infrastructure around this drill. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, I, I want to go back to something that you mentioned about mid-sized drones still having their place because, you know, bigger isn't always better, right? I mean, for those big, wide-open fields, it makes total sense. But if you drop that thing into a 20-acre irregularly shaped field, that's probably not going to be the right tool in the belt. You know, and I think as we're seeing larger and larger drones introduced to the market. It seems like we're getting to a place where it might actually help the industry to start thinking in terms of drone classification based on capacity. You know, for example, drones under 30 liters, maybe that's class one. And then your mid-size 40 to 70 liter platforms like the T-50s or some of the Exidy models in development, the XAGP-150 maybe, that could be class two. And then there are these really large drones like the series Black Betty Stacked or the T-100. And to me, those kind of feel like uh, like a class three high capacity machine. And, you know, as I think through that, I don't know exactly where those thresholds should land, whether the cutoff is 70, 75, 80 liters. But the general framework of a classification system like that seems helpful to me because it would give operators a way to think through which drone actually fits their conditions instead of just assuming that the biggest drone is automatically the best choice. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that structure would help a lot of people. Just because every drone size solves a different problem. Smaller drones excel in the tight, narrow, complex fields in different specialty um, application groups. Mid-sized drones are like the everyday tool for most operators. And these larger ones are built specific for workflows with specific logistics and field size. So having that framework gives people permission to pick the right tool instead of just chasing capacities and, and I need the biggest drone. Yeah, no, I love it. That's super helpful. And I think that's where the industry is headed, just helping operators understand what tool fits their operation instead of chasing, as you said, the biggest number on a spec sheet. Um, Man, I really appreciate you breaking that down. I'm looking forward to getting our machine and continuing the conversation with you. 
Um, it's going to be really cool to see how things continue to unfold. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this drone performs for sure. We're super excited about it. Um, we have very high expectations. Yeah, 100%. And for everyone watching, there's a lot happening in this space right now, and it's moving very, very fast. Um, we're trying to bring you the most honest, practical information we can um, so that you can make a well-informed decision for your farms, for your operations. And we're actually going to be doing a full walk around and deep dive into the series unit as soon as it arrives here in just a couple of weeks. We'll put it on the bench. We'll go through the build quality components, what we like what we don't and how it performs in our field conditions. So if you're not already, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications and stay plugged in. You won't want to miss that video. Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. And to thank all you. of you out there, uh, until the next one, as always, be safe, fly smart and keep building.